21 past 6. It's time for... This is the guy support in case I get them later on. I don't want this one at all. I don't want this Meniere's disease. Famously, well, if you're old enough, Brent Croswell. Uh, Croswell. Um, he had Meniere. Has had. Don't think it goes away. I'd better ask Professor Owen White, urologist at the Royal Melbourne Hospital. Good morning, Professor. Good morning. This would be a most unpleasant thing to have, I think. Um, in many ways, both because of its long-term effects and also because it is profoundly uncomfortable when you get it. Uh, yes, it, it, the world as one knows it would no longer exist, would it? You, you, you lose your balance, essentially, don't you? Well, essentially, yes, but it's, it's a very acute loss of balance. The, the fact that the whole world is moving, it's not a matter of just being unsteady. Um, literally everything is disrupted and uh, in some cases people are literally thrown to the floor unable to move Well, we've all, and with vomiting we've all had it when we were uh, 18 years old and on schoolies but to live with it all the time would be something else again yes but uh, when you're at schoolies it's chemically alleviated in terms of its importance you don't always remember how bad it was <laughs> nicely put uh, now the the inner ear, the balance centres, uh, not my long suit, I presume yours, is sort of like three circles intertwined, isn't it? Yes, it's, well, yes and no. It's, it's, uh, there are three circles, semicircular canals on each side, and they work in a push-pull relationship. It's an incredibly elegant and simple system that produces a complex output mm. with post-processing. And and the there's liquid in them that presumably falls to whichever the bottom is at any one point in time, the bottom of those rings, and thereby indicates your... It's like a GPS. Well, not quite. Those, um, those three semicircular canals actually only detect movement. They're not the gravity receptors or the acceleration receptors fore and aft, acceleration receptors fore and aft. Mm. Um, but essentially, it's, it's a little bit like uh, when you have a few tea leaves sitting in the top of your cup of tea and you rotate the tea the tea leaves don't really move in the same way that the cup moves they sort of have inertia and the same thing in the semicircular canals there are little hair cells that stick up and as the fluid remains relatively stationary while the head moves in a rotational direction okay uh, the hairs get bent and they fire off at a particular rate depending on how fast the head moves uh, now, in, in Meniere's disease, uh, this no longer functions optimally. The, um, it would be nice to say we understood everything that happens in, in, in Meniere's, but the reality is that um, there is uh, a change in the fluid concentration of uh, potassium in particular and change in the volume and uh, the ear becomes dysfunctional generally more so on one side than the other, which throws the system out a bit more, and it does so acutely, although there are long-term chronic changes as well. You know, that's something I've noticed. If you went to a GP, uh, they would never say, we don't know, whereas when you get to your level, once you're a professor, uh, you feel more, much more comfortable saying, we don't know what, to, <laughs> what it is. Ignorance makes life much, much easier. It means you can say, no, that's not my area. <laughs> okay. Um, uh, do we know, uh, okay that's what what causes it the uh, the volume of fluid and the properties of the fluid the the composition of the fluid indeed um, for some reason i mean there there are there is a membrane within the middle ear and on one side you have a high potassium complex and on the other side a, a low potassium concentration and for some reason and they used to think it, w it was due to a rupture in the membrane for some reason there's an efflux of potassium from the high area to the low area and that changes the low area and that changes the whole electrical milieu of the middle ear and uh, you know signaling is based on 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 electrical impulses um there's no evidence uh, anatomically or otherwise that there is actually a physical rupture so it's it's not entirely understood i hey, um just random thought uh, just as the, they have made uh, artificial cochlear implants, uh, would it be possible to disconnect the malfunctioning uh, balance centres 
and uh, just just whack in something like you might get in an iPad. So when it turns, uh, the screen goes the right way. Well, in in theory, yes, um, but the reality is that uh, one of the treatments for, for profound meniere's is is in fact to disconnect. Uh, the, the worst ear. The trouble is in a significant percentage of patients the disease is bilateral and uh, the nervous system actually then will in most people reinterpret the signal it's getting. The, re the reality is when we're born we get a signal from one ear and a signal from the other ear and then our brain interprets that. Right, we learn uh, to interpret yeah, that information. That's right. Okay. Uh, and if you had many ears disease how often would you get an attack? Very variable. Um, some people will have them uh, monthly, rarely more frequent, usually less frequent, um, but some people will have years uh, apart. And, uh, but it's the ones that have moderately frequent attacks. Unfortunately, many people are diagnosed with many years who actually have other, other diseases, um, specific, particularly migraine, um, mm -hmm. that, can, that can mimic the syndrome. Is this in some way to do with diet, arguably? Well, it's a moot point. One of the treatments for many years is to actually restrict salt and use uh, fluid tablets. Um, but there's very little evidence uh, to indicate that that uh, does make a difference. Uh, uh, it's partly genetically determined. It partly occurs in people after infection and after trauma. Um, again, um, I plead ignorance. Uh, for somebody like Brent Croswell, um, it's never going to go away? Well... It does, but it, it does go away in people, or the vestibular component will go away, but it's usually associated with complete deafness in that ear. Hmm. Well, they're Sorry, be, better than falling over all the time. So Arguably, yes. Well, thank you, Professor. Um, uh, I, I hope very much that I never get that disease. Many is disease to do with balance. Professor Owen White, neurologist at the Royal Melbourne Hospital.